Alrighty, Rue, I'm assuming that you've already completed a schematic and you're going to have a bunch of parts here, but this is just concerned with laying out a, uh, the dimensions of a board exactly as you want. So we're going to start with the mounting holes. Uh, grab, grab the Add Footprints tool and you can just search for mounting hole M3, which you'll find under this library, and it's a 32 millimeter hole. So we're going to lay out four holes, and we want them to be 35 millimeters apart, so on a 35 millimeter square. So I'll just place four of those. Maybe just copy these to paste them. So we've got four holes, and we want to space them exactly 35 millimeters square from each other. So I, th I think the easiest way to do this is to place the grid origin at the center of one of those holes because obviously our grid is in an imperial unit right now. So placing them 35 millimeters apart is not straightforward. Uh, so we can now that we've placed our grid origin, we can right click one of the footprints and position relative to. We can use the grid origin and we'll set it to 35 zero for the right hole. We'll do the same for the bottom left hole, that's 0, 0.35 to position it 35 mils down, millimeters, excuse me. And of course for the bottom right, 35, 35. Whoops, you have to deselect and reselect the new part. 35, 35. Beautiful. A great thing to do here is to select all your, all your holes and lock them. Because these holes aren't referenced in EE schema, in the schematic, or at least they shouldn't be, because that's a bit amateurish, uh, you can just place the footprints here. They don't have a reference, but you can lock them in place. That means when you go up to update your PCB from the schematic, these won't get deleted. Usually these will just get deleted because they're not referenced in the schematic. Now, uh, we want to place our board outline around these holes, and we want to round the corners because that looks nice and professional. So. Starting at the top left, we can go to the edge cuts layer, just here, and we want to grab the add graphic arc. So the way this tool works is you select the center of the arc, you select an end point, and you rotate anti-clockwise to carve out that arc. So you always have to go anti-clockwise. Now you'll notice that our grid doesn't help us for this uh, bottom left hole, so what we need to do is place the grid origin at the center of it and then we can use that graphic arc. And I've selected, for this process, I've selected a 50 mils or 1.27 millimeter grid and I'm just bringing that arc out to the first grid dot that's outside the footprint of the part. So what's that? 50, 100, 150 thou, 150 mils. And we'll finish that off with the last mounting hole. And the reason we start with the corners first is because it makes it really trivial to just grab that, that uh, graphic line tool and now our line will snap to the edge of that. Um, oh, I need to put in that last corner. Grid origin, center of the hole, arc, center and anti-clockwise. Okay, now the graphic line tool makes it really easy to snap our straight line to the edge of our arcs on the corners so that you don't have to think too hard. And that is it. That is a standard size 35 millimeters square between, mount, between centers of our screw holes and then you just got a little cheeky stick out with nice professional looking rounded corners. You can go to View, 3D Viewer, or hit Alt-3, and that's what your board will look like, hopefully with some components on it.